and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and I'm outside today. It's beautiful. It's 75 degrees. I'm in Maryland Zone 7A and I thought I would talk to you about w tips for when to open your winter sewing containers and transplant them and what to do with them once you've opened them. Um, you know, winter sewing is a way of starting your seedlings outdoors and things like see the milk jugs over there uh, instead of indoors on their grow lights and so with the process for when you're going to transplant those or put those seedlings in your garden is a little different than when you start them indoors under grow light. Um, when they're indoors under grow lights, you end up potting them up at least once, if not twice, into larger containers. And with winter sowing, you're going to leave those seedlings in the jugs until very close to the time you're going to transplant them, if not like just a couple days before. Because the longer they can stay in the jug sealed, the better that greenhouse effect will be on them and the faster they'll grow. So if you can leave them, if, if, you, if they're healthy and happy, leave the container sealed until very close to when you're going to transplant. Anytime you're going to put anything in your garden, it's a good idea to know whether they can handle a frost or not. So if you look on a seed packet or if you Google the plant, um, you'll be able to find out whether it's frost hardy or frost tolerant versus not frost tolerant. I got some pollen on my glasses. Most of the things that you eat in the summer that you grow in the summer are not frost hardy. Um, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, um, zucchini, squash, pumpkins, those are all things, uh, cucumbers, those are all things that cannot handle a freeze, they cannot handle a frost, they can't handle anything below zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. And that means you want to wait until close to your average last frost date to transplant them. Um, sometimes after, in my case, I usually wait till close to Mother's Day. The one exception to when you may want to open up your jugs earlier than the time you're going to transplant them is if those seedlings are coming out through the tops of the jugs and not easily pushed back in and they're basically stopping any air circulation from getting into the jugs, which can create a, pre a pressure of them. The leaves will get moldy, um, the leaves will wilt. Um, it's just not good. So if that's happening and they're basically blocking air circulation, you can open them early. Make sure before you open your jugs that the plants are ready to be transplanted. You want to wait until you have at least two sets of true leaves. My neighbors are a bit loud sometimes. When all plants sprout, they have a set of leaves, uh, seed leaves, and I'll put the scientific name up here, um, that basically will feed the plant until it can set new leaves. Those seed leaves will die off and the true leaves, the leaves that this is um, red Russian kale, the leaves that will look like the plant will look the rest of its life are the true leaves. So if you have a plant, let's say, that has just like something heart shaped or a very simple initial set of first leaves, that's not right, the right time to transplant them. Here's an example of three sets of true leaves. This is the first set of true leaves after the initial leaves, right? So we have one set of true leaves. This is a second set of true leaf right here. And then if you look in here, you can even see a third set. So one to three days before you're going to transplant your seedlings, before you're ready to put them in the garden, you want to open up the jugs. So you need, they need at least 12 hours open. Now, winter sown seedlings, unlike, unlike, um, Seed, seedlings you start indoors have been in the sunlight so they don't need to be um, they don't need as much time to transition to be ready you don't have to harden them off but it's really nice I mean if I stick my finger in here it's at least I can feel the temperature difference it's moist it's warm and they've been used to growing in that environment so they need a day or two to acclimate so I'm gonna take off the tape here so let's see how it looks. This is the bachelor's button. It looks like no nasturtiums came out after that one got killed, which is fine. But look how beautiful these bachelor's buttons are. So when you open a jug day one, you're going to want to open it like this. And then you can just put the lid back on, just put the lid back over and leave it like that overnight. If it's in the evening, like now, it's late afternoon, they're not going to get any direct sun. They're probably safe to leave like this. But if it's like the heat of the day, you're basically getting rid of all the moisture that was around them <laughs> and they're like what's going on so they're faded kind of wilty because they're used to being in that moisture so by putting this back on that helps kind of keep a little bit of that for them and just lets it, them get used to having less moisture if the seedlings are too big to be able to put the lid back over if they're coming out the top and there's no way you could get the lid back on it put them in a shaded spot and leave them, make sure they're in the shade for the day, for day one, maybe day two, depending on, sometimes tomatoes need a second day. Um, but really, 
you're good to transplant after that. So basically seed jugs need one to three days for the seedlings to get used to having less moisture um, and the warmer temperatures. There is one thing I'll note, which is once you open a container, these seedlings and the soil will dry out much faster. So you need to watch the soil and moisture level in the container more. I will have to water this more often. Like I have to water, I've had to water this kale at least twice a week until it was ready to transplant. So before I go, let's take a look at how my winter sowing jugs are doing and see what's sprouted and how big they are. Here's cucumber and you can see they're doing great in here. This is celtus and celery, and you can see the smaller seedlings there in the back. Those are celery seedlings uh, further back, yeah. And as you can see, the celtus, which is like a lettuce, is ready to be transplanted. So I'm waiting. This is an example of I'm waiting to open this jug until I see those, and it looks like they're getting pretty close to having two sets of true leaves, until I see the celery has two sets of true leaves. And once the celery plants have two sets of true leaves, I'll feel comfortable opening this up and transplanting out the celtus. And it'll probably be around the right time to transplant celery. These are Halani, Art Colors, Dwarf Emerald, and African Togo tomatoes. Ooh, looks like all four kinds have sprouted. That's exciting. You can see I did four varieties in this jug because I only needed a few, um, a few tomato plants for each. My Love in a Mist has sprouted. I've had one dark star zucchini sprout, and that's fine. I really only need one of those plants. Now, when the nasturtiums got killed um, because I wasn't taking care of my jugs over winter, um, I planted a new jug on uh, March 25, and you can see several have sprouted. I think we have two, looks like two. Oh, three. Yeah, it looks like three inside, so three have sprouted. I love the look of nasturtiums. They look like um, the petals on a... Um, for lily ponds. <laughs> now here's an example of sunflower, strawberry blonde, and you can see they're starting to get up near the top. For now, there's still enough circulation in here that I don't really need to do anything different. For this jug, the Thai basil, the feverfew, and the fenugreek has sprouted. The whorehound has not. But look, Odomero eggplant and Hansel eggplant have sprouted. This is usually around the time of the spring that they do sprout. So they're doing good. They're on time for winter sowing timing. You can see our dogwood tree is blooming. Yay, dogwoods, native to the area. Now, one interesting thing I heard that makes sense to me is people ask, well, how do the seedlings catch up when you winter sow them? And I think it's because they get direct sun. Direct sun, sunlight is so much more powerful than grow lights. And that's one reason they catch up so fast in the jugs, even though they take a little longer to sprout. All right, let's see what else has sprouted. Okay, here's the experimental peppers. This is the Lhasa Tibetan and golden bell pepper. If you recall, I started seedlings indoors as well as out here. And I'm going to, obviously these sprouted later than the other ones. But I'm not comparing them at this stage. I'm going to compare which ones bear fruit first. So... Alpine strawberry. They're tiny, but they've sprouted. Looking good. Another one of the experimental peppers. I got the blot and the dew sweet. Let's see. Yeah, we have sprouts on one end. The dew sweet have sprouted. Here's the eggplant QI round and Nuva, Nueva agencia. Well, some peppers are further along than others. For example, these are, this is my dew long. Uh, I planted some more and yeah, I did these on and and leaves apple peppers They're looking great. Here's crookneck squash. Oh Yeah They're looking happy and healthy Here's honey nut squash. It's a winter squash You can see why I only do like three seeds in a jug because they really do take up a lot of room in it, even in a whole milk jug. Now here's a four peppers, a shishito, carrot, Brazilian starfish, and charpe. And it looks like everybody but the carrot pepper have sprouted, which is kind of how it was last year. Last year the carrot peppers took the longest to sprout of all the different varieties. As you can see from the markings, the black pineapple tomato seedling I had to replant because they got killed on a frost. And I replanted them. I 
open the jugs and put new seeds in on the 24th of March. And if you look in, we have a black pineapple. We have two. Oh, wait, three. I think I see three black pineapple seedlings. And on the other side is the summer sunrise tomato. So they're both looking great. Okay, here's stocks, Canterbury bells, money plant, and balsam. Oh yeah, we have sprouts in all four parts. Oh, they're looking so great. You can see the money plant is the biggest of all of them. That one in the corner is the, that one that has sort of the pink edges to it is balsam. Oh, they're gonna be pretty. Here's kukuzi squash and lufa, and I think we have an interloper. That looks like a carrot seed to me. I don't know about you, but it looks like the kukuzi squash has sprouted. I don't see any lufa in here. So I'm oh, look. Lilu has set up house where I put out the blanket to film. <laughs> She's like, yes, I will lay on this blanket, this comfy blanket you laid out. And it must be for me, not for you to film. This coral nymph salvia. You don't even need to look in, but let's see. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Now, every once in a while, I forget to label the outside of a jug, but that's why I include labels on the inside. So this is... Uh, this looks like it has mint tomato and... Oh, I can't tell what you are. And I can't tell what that other word says, but they definitely look like tomatoes to me. So they're looking happy and healthy and I'm liking it and I'll find out later. <laughs> My Aster's Red Burnery and Matsumoto Blue. Oh, you decided to move? Okay, that's okay. Both sides have sprouted. Pretty Aster's. Oh, I love growing Aster's. I'm looking forward to them this year. It's my foxglove has sprouted now this is an ex so foxglove is a perennial it will put out flowers the second year and you can see how small perennials start when they first when perennials first bloom they're always smaller than annuals because they take longer to get established so don't panic if you have a perennial that's one that comes back year after year um, native plant or otherwise that isn't as big as the others because that's just kind of how they behave that's how they roll <laughs> now one container i'm going to need to open up soon um, to transplant is some calendula. Look how nice and healthy they're looking inside of there. Yeah, I'm going to open that up today. In fact, I think I'll open these up to transplant. I'm going to set that over here. Now this I am so excited about and I, I need your advice. Should I open these up? Like when's the right time to transplant asparagus? I think, I think they're ready to transplant now. This is purple asparagus and it's looking so pretty. Look at that. It looks to me, by looking on the outside, that they're pretty well grown. So I think I'm probably going to transplant those these weekend as well. So I'm going to put that over here to open up today. Apricot Xenia and Mazurka Xenia. Looks like we don't have any sprouts. Looks like the Mazurka didn't sprout, but the Apricot Xenias are doing great. And I love that color. And you can see this one's getting close to the top. Green Zebra and Persimmon Tomato. Oh yeah, both have sprouted and looking pretty healthy. My copper pot poppy and my black peony poppies. Actually, I wonder if what is growing in that other pot might be poppies. They kind of look like it, don't they? Let's see, we got snapdragon, rocket mix, and apple blossom. Got a few blooms there, or a few sprouts there. And got through those, got to look at these still. All right, let's see what else we got. Just about every jug has one sprout in it. Oh, this is interesting. So until a couple days ago, I only had one butterfly pea sprout, butterfly pea flower sprout, but it looks like a second one has come out. So that just goes to show you, you never know when another seed might come out. That's another reason to leave the jugs closed until very close to transplant time, because you might still have some late sprouters. Here's winter candy roaster squash. Oh yeah, those are gonna be big. Look already, the leaf is getting close to the top. That one's going to be hard to keep contained. I have a feeling in a week I'm going to have to open that container because the leaves will be growing through the top. But we'll see. Here's Funocherio's red tomato and Fakel tomato. Looks like we have sprouts on both sides. Yay! Jewels of Opar. There's a couple in here. Yeah, we have a couple sprouts. Statis, statis, statis. Apricot and mixed colors. Looks like we got only one plant growing here, the apricot. It's healthy, it's happy looking. For brown pepper, it looks like some of them have sprouted. I find the ones that are hot peppers tend to take longer than the other peppers to sprout. Blue vervain and 
uh, Blazing Star. These are both native plants. I don't see any blue vervain, but Blazing Star has sprouted. Here's the Angel's Wings Roses. Ooh, they're getting nice size now. Looks like we have three growing in here. Oh, I'm really looking forward to growing these this year. Pumpkin, sugar, small sugar, and Cinderella. Oh, yeah, look how... <laughs> It's like, no, I'm here. And I'm pretty sure when I looked earlier, there was just one. Uh, there weren't any of the small sugar ones. My Korean squash. We have one sprout here. Maybe two even. I can't tell if that's one or two. Watermelon on one side and carnival squash on the other. And see how they're sticking to the sides? That means they can get, if it freezes, those leaves could get frostburn. Or if they're up against it and it gets um, really sunny, that can also mean they get burned. But don't panic if that happens. As long as the plant is happy and healthy. Lemon Queen sunflowers. Oh yeah, they're getting big. Oh, usually the last to sprout is my Gumfrina. But I'm noticing the strawberry Gumfrina, we have some small sprouts. So that's exciting. Moonflower. <gasps> oh yeah. And I'm really curious to see if this passion flower, my mom saved these seeds for me on a walk. Let's see if we got anything in here. Nothing yet. This one might need some cold stratification, which might mean it'll be a little bit longer till we see it, but you never know. All right. So I would say about 85% of the jugs have sprouted keeping up to be a good year and uh, I'm going to leave you off with seeing some things that are sprouting in our garden. See you next time.